Hello guys and girls, how's it going? Screezilla here, and I hope you're all well. And you join me today to send off the Hargo. Yes, goodbye sweet prince. The Hargo is leaving us. So we're going to take it out for one last battle. Now, the Hargo is a pretty important tank for Japan. Um, and it's kind of... Well... It's very frustrating that they're removing it. The Argo was pretty much the most prolific tank in the Japanese army, with around about 2,300 models being built, and they served throughout the war. Um, the Argo originally was built in about 1935, I think it was. It was designed in the 30s, the early 30s, and, well, it's had a bit of a rough time in War Thunder. It's not been the best tank ever. It's never been a great vehicle. But before the uh, very lovely changes that happened, it wasn't a terrible tank. Now, however, this thing has become a awful vehicle. We've got a locust over on our left hand side, or right hand side even. We can't penetrate. Because what's happened with the ammo changing, it's really hurt this vehicle. Um, because now, not only do you have terrible armour, but you only have 30mm of penetration. Which, uh, to anybody, is not great. not a great amount of penetration and uh, it's not a great gun so really this tank has become an absolute useless piece of machinery now the tank's been removed from game which as I said is a bit of a, a bit of a bum move really it's very sad because it's a tank that needs to be in game because it is an important tank historically. Now we did manage to pen the side of that BT fire, so that's something. Um, but we have lost this much, I think, because we're already being spawn camped by locusts, um, being uh, rank one now. Not that that really changes much, but yeah, we have we've pretty much lost this game already. Now the premium is still available for purchase, which is odd to me. They've removed the regular tech tree variant, but they've kept in the premium one. Now the premium one will set you back 250 golden eagles, and it's the commander's variant of the Argo. Now one thing that it does have is smoke, and that's quite a useful tool. Smoke is very handy and has its uses. Um, but that's about all that it has. It's an advantage to this thing. It's smoke and your artillery is probably going to do more than your actual gun these days. Which is just. Uh, an amazing state of gameplay, you know, that they've managed to absolutely mess this up so very much. Um, Okay, 
is a BT-5 over there. So, as you see, we only have about 30 millimeters of penetration, which is not great. We do have some explosive filler in our shell, which is something. Uh, but we do want to try and get a kill at least to say goodbye and thank you for all the fish to this tank because well as I said it's not great but it's done its job and that job was to be a terrible terrible starting tank for everyone that started Japanese tanks back in the day and I did see a or I saw a triple A vehicle or something wrong with the Dead French tank there, I think. Our only real chance of killing anything is really just with a a lightly armoured target. But there's the BT-5. Managed to get his radiator again. Uh, but that's it, that's all we can do. Fuel tank, we set it on fire. Okay. And we got it, we killed it. Yes, we got a BT5 kill. So 30mm of penetration is still enough, baby. Aw, oh, yeah. So yes, the Hargo has still got it. Um, that's made me immensely pleased with myself. Getting a kill with this thing was uh, something I didn't think was going to happen today. if we can push the advantage. Now this tank is still not bad in all honesty. As I said, it's got very low penetration and that does hamper the vehicle quite a lot. But it's not a slow tank, it's quite a nippy little tank which is really quite handy. It's got a good little bit of speed on it. The gun has got decent velocity. That's something that it does have and helps at an immense amount. And that's something that is a really big advantage to this tank. Um, I still don't understand why they've removed it from Tech I know, obviously because the penetration is still quite low, but you're still able to penetrate things with this vehicle. And it is such an important tank for Japan historically that it should be there. It would be like removing Shermans from the American Tech Tree. You know, it's their most iconic tank from the war and removing it is really just a it's just a damn shame because we want more historical vehicles we want more tanks in the game we don't want to lose tanks from the game and that's what's happening at the moment we're losing tanks from the game and especially important tanks such as this one you know it, it's such a, a a unique tank, you know, and it, for its day it was a very good tank as well. Um, when this tank first came up against things like the BT-5s and um, the light Russian tanks, it didn't do too badly. Um, the Japanese were pretty much slaughtered, but it did manage to, to, to cause some chaos, which was, you know, one of its main jobs of course. The fact that this tank did manage to fight the Russians off and, you know, keep fighting throughout the war shows how strong it was. Now the tank did end, did end up in, um, I think it was Thai, Thailand's service a little bit later in the war, and a little bit later in life actually, I think in about 1945-46 it ended up in Thailand, 
and it did serve for quite a bit of time there. The majority of its time was spent serving as a sort of bunker and pillbox uh, on some of the islands. Seriously, we've lost a. now. As I said, even though this tank only has 30mm penetration, it still has the ability to cause damage. And it can still fight. You know, it may not be the best tank in game, but it's still able to do its job. That we're not going to be doing much damage to. Thankfully, the Tarse managed to help us out there. Thank you so much, Mr. Tarse. Um, the fact that the AAA has more penetration value than the sort of tank really shows what state we are in at the moment. They definitely need to do some. Um, changing of the way AAA works, which they're like high velocity on piercing rounds, because I uh, I do question the fact that a 20mm uh, auto cannon has more penetration value than a uh, See what that guy's shooting at, so I'm just going to drop some artillery there just in case. <sighs> Idiot. Don't die, don't die. Drop artillery and the guy runs into it, that's typical War Thunder. Um, but yeah, it's it's such an important vehicle and removing it from the game is just a travesty. It's an absolute... Um, it's just disgusting. Because it still can go, it can still fight. Now this, as I say, is the premium version. But it's still got... it's still got ability, it's still got... Um, you know, at this BR you can still fight the British with it, you can still fight some of the American tanks with it. Of course, some tanks are going to be unpenetrable, but you're going to have that with a lot of tanks. And you can have that trouble with a lot of vehicles. You know, it's just a fact of life at this BR. You're going to have issues with tanks being way too strong for you, or way too, you know, way too weak for others. It's just how the game goes. But removing it just seems like a step backwards rather than a step forwards. So there are some variants of this tank as well that they could have added in as well. Um, there's the later war variants. Uh, the Hargo Commander as well had uh, few different tweaks to it, but the later variants for the Thai army had uh, some oblique armour strapped onto it. 
there was also the uh, a slight couple of slight variants as well there was an actual um, Hovru and that's H-O-R-U and that's a tank destroyer variant there are some really cool variants of this tank which aren't in game um, I don't think the key V is in game either from my memory or the key new uh, which are both tanks that are basically able to fill the job that this tank you know that you need at this BR it's adequate. It's not the best tank, but it is an adequate tank. You know, I've not been aiming at weak spots. I've just been shooting at flats of people's tanks at the moment. You know, sure, I couldn't penetrate the Locust, but the Locust is um, a bit of a weird case because that tank should be a high BR. It's a very good vehicle. Um, but by no means is this tank bad, and by no means should they have removed these tanks from game. No, of course, I'm doing better in the premium than I did in the stock version, but then I've had more luck in this version. And they have the same gun, they have the same velocity, the same shell. You know, 30mm of penetration, but it is a decent velocity shell at this BR, because most things just spit shells out and can't do any damage. Um, so yeah, at least I've given it a fitting send-off. Another zone captured, we have the advantage. Yeah. There's not many of them left, I think it's time we... I don't really want to lose a spot. I kind of don't want to lose A. I don't want to lose Alpha, but... Well, it's time we move on. It's time we fight like a man. We go out fighting. If they're going to take us away from this game, we're going out on our own terms. And that's fisticuffs, my friend. Fisticuffs. The speed of this tank as well, as I said, is very good. Look, cross country we're doing 24 miles per hour without any trouble. And that's the thing about this tank, is it was designed for the Japanese mainland. This tank was designed for the Japanese islands. It, the reason it's so small and light is because it was designed for these areas in Japan which are hard to reach for um, you know standard tanks. You know, a normal tank, a standard tank of the era would not be able to do what this tank could do in the uh, in the early days of the war. Now it was based off the uh, Cardinal Lloyd, I think it was, uh, gun carriage, which again should be in game. And the Cardinal Lloyd tankettes, which is a basically a tiny little British tank with a little Lewis gun strapped to the front. I think they actually did have an anti-tank gun on one of them. Um, but the actual chassis is based off of that, and. It's not a bad chassis at all. The engine as well is a good engine. It's got the, I think it's a Mitsubishi engine in this one, off the top of my head. Just scroll down quickly. Yeah, it's the Mitsubishi engine, an air-cooled diesel engine. And they used diesel because there was less chance of fire. Um, you know, it just gave the tank a little bit more durability, a little bit more chance of survival. Another thing about this tank was it was lined with asbestos to keep the crew cool and also to prevent fires from the outside. So, that is the Type 95 Hargo. And, well, a fitting send off, three kills. It did well. And plus, the normal Hargo actually got an upgrade, so that's somewhat good. So, I'll just quickly scratch that in. Oh, I might as well go for that one next. So the Hargo. Let us just uh just show off your beautiful camouflages. We will go with the good old fashioned warship grey. And we will say goodbye to you, sweet prince. We will miss you from in game. Luckily, everybody that has basically, you know, had an account before the changes will still have the Hargo in reserve. We'll still have the um, this vehicle available to them. But unfortunately, if you're a new player, if you're new to War Thunder, after the uh, 13th of February, you really have no no way of getting it now. It's gone. 
The premium is still there, I wouldn't recommend picking it up, it's not worth the price, but if you do get it for free it's worth it. Um, the tank is not bad at all, and the only reason it's being removed is because of the ammunition. We do have the Kini, which is a variant, I believe, from the top of my head, of the Targo. I think Kini is... Because there was the Kinu and the Kiri. Um, there's too many of them. Um, yeah, I believe this is the the, the Type 3 Kiri, or Kini, as they've put it in game. Um, there are so many different variants of tanks, so, and basically it's, um, if I'm remembering it correctly, it's set up with the same chassis as the, uh, the Hargo, and you can sort of see that slightly different, um, a slightly different setup. Uh, it has got the 37mm Type 100 cannon, whereas this one has the 94, and the main difference with this one, of course, is you do get this shell, which has 40mm penetration, 10mm more, and that's it. Now this thing is a good little tank, but I still don't understand removing the Hargo. It doesn't make any sense. It can still fight, and it can still punch above its weight. Alright guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, you will notice the walker, uh, the walker, the watermark on this video uh, with um, uh, XSplit. Um, and that's because I'm testing out the software at the moment, uh, just seeing how it goes. Um, so I'd like to get some feedback as well, so let me know what you think about the video quality, uh, sound quality, just general quality in general. I'd love to get your, uh, um, your thoughts on that one. Alright guys, until next time, this is me, Screezilla, saying goodbye to the hard go.